Bruh. Bienvenidos and welcome back to Puro Pinche Gol, the place where we discuss all things USMNT y la Selección Mexicana. My name is Adrian. Joining me once again is my co-host, Tocayo. Adrian. Adrian, what's good, man? How are you? Hey, dude. How's it going? Getting ready for the semifinals of the Gold Cup. Getting ready for uh, wrapping this up and uh, seeing if Mexico can actually uh, take advantage of his history because we all know current present, they're not taking advantage of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, one of the big two, Mexico or U.S., can bring it home or if it's going to be a new winner, Jamaica or Panama. Yeah. Um, before we get started into our semifinal preview, USA, Panama, Mexico, Jamaica, I want to give out a quick reminder to uh, our followers here, our subscribers. Make sure you all check out our uh, video we posted last week, our 250 subscriber giveaway special. Um, we are giving away USA or a Mexico jersey depending on the winner's choice. Uh, so please be sure to check that video out. Uh, as a reminder, you have to comment on that video which jersey you prefer and uh, who your favorite player for Mexico or USA is, past or present, as well as be a subscriber. So make sure you comment on that video. We'll link it in the description. Uh, but yeah, Adrian, man, let's get into it. Semifinal preview here. Let's start off with uh, Mexico versus Jamaica. Uh, Mexico, who kind of turned the ship back, you know, on course after beating Costa Rica 2 0. Yeah. Ultimately, it was kind of a boring first half where Costa Rica more or less dominated. Got kind of uh, interesting in the second half when Mexico scored the two goals and ultimately just dom- dominated uh, possession. There was really no real threat in the second half for from Costa Rica. Um, but they will be playing a, a very intriguing, very uh, competitive, quick, agile, strong Jamaica team with a lot of quality players on their team. Why don't you give us, uh, before we really get into the preview, a round da- rundown of how Jamaica made it to where they are now and how Mexico made it to the semifinals. For sure. So uh, Jamaica sh- shows up to the semifinals by tying 1-1 against the U.S., uh, winning 4-1 against Trinidad and Tobago, winning 5-0 against the Kitson Nevis, and then defeating Guatemala on a close match 1-0 against, uh, sorry, for the quarterfinals. As far as Mexico goes, uh, they won 4-0 against Honduras, 3-1 against Haiti. They lost against Qatar, 1-0, and they won 2-0 against Costa Rica in the quarterfinals. So that's this is how the, they're both showing up to the semis. Yeah, uh, definitely an unexpected loss to Mexico against Qatar that's... that we've talked about. Uh, and uh, Jamaica really proving to be um, one of the big, dark horses or favorites for this tournament, especially as the mm-hmm. tournament has progressed. Um, started off with that 1-1 tie against the USA and hasn't really had an upset or any any real uh, you know red flag since since then. I mean, not to say that was a red flag. That was more of a red flag for the USA. Um, <laughs> for L3, man, how do you see them lining up against this competitive, quick, agile Jamaica team? Oof. Well, I mean, it's... It's uh, it's interesting. I th- I don't think Jimmy Lozano will deviate a lot from you know the last few matches that he has had. Um, I think he's gonna be playing pretty much around the same lineup as he did against Costa Rica. It's uh, I would say I would love to say that you know he can turn around the bench and find players that will counter Jamaica's trends. Uh, but that's that's not the case. <laughs> I mean, there's there isn't anything that is within his uh, arsenal of players where he can turn around and say, all right, this guy is good against you know physical. And quick players, so I think he's going to stick with Ochoa on the on the on, on the goalie. Uh, Jorge Sanchez as a right back, Cesar Montes and Johan Vasquez as the center backs. Jesus Gallardo as the left back. I don't see why he will include Gerardo Arteaga. Um, there's a there's a big question mark in the middle with Edson Alvarez. As you know, Edson Alvarez came off uh, last match with a slight injury. He's still under evaluation. Apparently, it isn't necessarily a, medic, a, a medical consider or medically consider uh, injury per, per the pundits and some of the research that I've done. Um, and so they're going to wait for him until the very last minute on tomorrow to see if he's uh, fit to play. But if he's not fit to play, I think they will, they will ultimately put either uh, Luis Romo on that position and then move Eric Sanchez or put Eric Sanchez on that role. Uh, which both of them, I think, will heavily struggle with uh, Jamaica's midfield and uh, providing uh, defensive support to Mexico. Looking at the midfield, as I said, uh, Aurel Antuna will play as, a right, as the right wing. Luis Chavez will, will, of course, be one of the uh, center midfielders. And then Aurel Pineda will play on the left wing. And at, up top, I don't think he's going to uh, you know, go any crazy with it. I think he's going to stick with Henry Martin for the first half. 
Um, and then maybe we'll see El Bebote Jimenez jumping in on the second half, depending on the situation of the match, uh, maybe even before that. So uh, I, said, I just want to reiterate, it's an Alvarez right now. It's supposed to be one of the, the only central midfielder or the only true central, central midfielder, uh, but that can change between removing him and adding Eric Sanchez to the mix. So those are that's the expected lineup that I have. Great. Yeah, I mean... That that loss of Edson Alvarez, if it is mm-hmm. a loss, I've read the it's same thing one, yeah. that uh, it's going to be last minute, and they might even just save him gambling that they make it to the final uh, yeah. for the final. Um, you know, Jamaica in recent history, last four or five years, has really had a threes number. Man, they've um, yeah. in in qualifying for the twenty twenty two World Cup, I think they tied in in Las Teca, and uh, you know they they've just been uh, Mexico won the previous meeting or sorry. In the uh, Copa Oro, they've they've done a uh, one nil Jamaica won in 2017. Uh, mm-hmm. Jamaica they tied again in Group C uh, in zero zero. That one zero win for Jamaica was in the semifinals. Um, uh, the 2015 final, Mexico won three one. Um, and then just in qualifying, uh, like we said, uh, Mexico won or they they tied one uh, one. Mexico tied zero zero with Jamaica back in. 2013 cycle uh just been a lot of uh just ties and or narrow victories from mexico Mm -hmm. um i think that has come partially because of um mexico's stagnation in the concacaf but also because of jamaica's improvement right i mean if if you look at their roster they have we mentioned before uh, many key players that are uh you know titulares uh, starters in the Premier League or the uh, the um, championship out there in England. Uh, some of their key players being Antonio, who's the West Ham forward, uh, Bailey, the winger for Aston Villa, Andre Blake, who's the Philadelphia Union goalkeeper and probably right now the best, maybe the best goalkeeper playing in North America. He's just playing consistently really well. At least he's been the best goalkeeper, I feel, in this tournament. Um, Amari Bell, uh, Lutton Town, left back. Uh, Bernard, the Portsmouth uh, center back who's on loan from Manchester United. So just a lot of quality on this Jamaica team and a lot of speed on this Jamaica team. Um, You know, we've talked, you know, in depth how Mexico struggles against these speedy teams. What do you think they have to change for this match to be able to to adapt to that? I mean, I I don't know if there's anything they can do to adapt to that physicality, honestly. Um, One thing that I, I mean... It is not. It isn't a lie that Mexico struggles with those kind of teams, right? Uh, it, I think historically, even historically speaking, not even just recent history or with just Jimmy Lozano, um, they they do have a hard time just because of the nature of the Mexican player. I mean, it's not necessarily physically gifted, and it isn't necessarily you know pace gifted as well. Um, so it's it's. I, I don't think there's anything that uh, Jimmy Lozano can do to mitigate any potential risk when it comes to you know one on one challenges or a counter counter attacks uh, from Jamaica. I think he needs to stick to, to his guns and just essentially keep on keep on pushing forward. Uh, as we have said on previous episodes, this Mexican team has gone back to being very offensive, having a, a, a huge amount of shots uh, on their favor. Albeit not all of them go to target, but we know that their biggest strength is just essentially playing offensively. So I think this will be one of those matches where Mexico can take advantage of those spaces. And the fact that I feel that Jamaica will, I mean, even if you saw, if you look at all the the, the most recent uh, matches of Jamaica, not against Mexico, but in general, Gold Cup wise. Uh, they have only received two goals, right? So this tells you that defensively speaking, they have they are very organized, very very well, uh, ex- very well um, lined up, and great chemistry among uh, the defenders. So this tells me that you know it's it's it isn't it's it's uh, they have put a lot of effort and focus on that specific area. Nonetheless, if you look at all the matches, all of the matches have been quite you know pretty much wide open for, from the midfield and above. Um, Jamaica isn't shy of just, you know showing uh, their or flexing their muscles when moving into offensive drives. So I feel that they're gonna keep on doing that because that's what they do best, and that's why that's the only thing they know how to do right now uh, in terms of attacking. So I think Jimmy Lozano should hone in those specific uh, skills and abilities that that it, their, his players have, 
uh, to take advantage of that specific position. I think Mexico will find a lot of spaces up front and either able to capitalize on them. Um, the, it will be, you know, a, a huge advantage against Jamaica. I mean, Jamaica can run as much as they want. They can pretty much uh, tackle as, as much as they want. But if Mexico is clinical in those passes when rubbing the ball on a counterattack and then being able to move as fast as they can um, up front, then I, I, I see I, I see Mexico, you know, taking taking the match home. Yeah, it's, it's really going to come down to, um, I think, the left back and the right back, Sanchez and Gallardo um, for Mexico. Are they going to be able to, you know, we've seen them, they, they play well going up and help create chances for the forwards in the midfield, but uh, they they struggle against speedy guys on the flanks. Um, so can Vasquez, Montes move over and shift and help cover for them? That's going to be a question. And if Edson Alvarez does play, can he, um, you know, retain possession, maintain possession for Mexico and uh, give less of the ball to Jamaica. Kind of big questions there. Yeah, uh, so... Um, it's going to take a lot of effort from the wingers too. I mean, as, as you mentioned, it, uh, as much as I would like Jimmy Lozano to stick to his plan, um, defensively speaking, you bring a really good point. Uh, you know, that, that ladder support uh, they can offer, I think is going to be a very physically taxing... A match for the wingers as well as for the midfielders. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Luis Chavez uh, very far from the opposition box and more closely to the midfield and close to Mexico's box. I wouldn't be surprised if either Edson Alvarez or Luis Romo, whoever takes his spot, uh, he spends more time supporting the center backs and um, providing, I guess, some relief on that specific area rather than... Uh, you know, joining the offensive drives whenever mm -hmm. he can. Yeah, good point. It will be interesting to see the tactics that Jimmy Lozano puts out there. Mm -hmm. um, important note, uh, I don't know how much of a difference or how much this will go into consideration or into play, actually, uh, but uh, Mexico has an extra day or had an extra day of rest. Uh, they played their quarterfinal on Saturday. Jamaica played it on Sunday. So, um, you know, for these quick turnaround games and quick tournaments, uh, that might be a key factor, uh, allowing Mexico just to have one extra rest day. Um, Adrian, as we wrap up the Mexico preview here, um, what do you think in score wise? If you want to give up prediction before, or Oof. maybe you don't want to give a prediction because we always <laughs> curse our the, uh, the curse we give them, the PPG curse. Uh huh. No, I, I think as much as I would like to see Mexico moving on to the final, I think this is going to be pretty much the the end of of this Mexican team. I find it really hard to believe that they're going to be able to take down Jamaica. Uh, historically speaking, Mexico sh should take this match home, uh, but the, the recent present doesn't doesn't guarantee me anything. So, I I think it's going to be like a one nil two one situation where Jamaica takes the the slightest lead and moves moves on to the to the final. Wow, big words. Um, yeah, I I think the opposite, man. I think it's, it is going to be a, a tough match, but I think ultimately I I feel it's time for Mexico's defense to click, uh, and uh, they'll. They'll be on point, and maybe Henry Martin finally gets in the score sheet. Um, but I, I feel a 2 1 win for, or 2 0 win for Mexico. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, man. So let's get into the uh, USA Panama preview. Um, before we kind of give our preview here, how did the teams get to where they are? As we mentioned, USA tied 1 1 against Jamaica in the first round of the group stage, then winning 6 0 against St. Kitts and 6 0 against Nina and Tobago. Uh, ultimately beating Canada after 120 boring minutes, 3-2 um, in penalties. Uh, Matt Turner's um, blocking two of those plant penalties and uh, becoming, a, again, a penalty hero for the USMNT. Um, Panama won 2-1 against Costa Rica, then beat 2-1 Martinique, and then drew their last game of the group stage 2-2 against El Salvador, and then destroyed, completely destroyed uh, Qatar 4-0, a Qatar team that probably should not have even been in the quarterfinals. Mm, um, yeah. So that is how Panama made it to where they are currently. Um, as far as lineup goes, you know, BJ Callahan, the last um, match against St. Kitts, against Trinidad, and against Canada, he pretty much kept the same um, formation, 4-3-3. It's a formation that he we have come to expect from him and one that we know he, he utilizes frequently. Um, that being Matt Turner in the back, uh, the two center backs, I, that I, I think he'll start, even though the center backs had a 
horrendous game against uh, Canada. I think he'll eventually choose on Miles Robinson and Jalen Neal for this one, with the left uh, wing or left back being Jones and right back being Reynolds. Uh, the three midfielders being uh, Sands in the middle, Busi on the right, and Mihailovic on the left. And uh, I think he'll start uh, Zendejas still. I, you know, even though he's having a poor performance in this tournament. And on the right side, I think he'll start uh, Caballo Cal, Cade Cal. I think Gressel did not show enough to be able to warrant another start. And as much as I want to see Brandon Vasquez starting as a number nine, I still think he'll stick with Ferreira. And assuming anything goes south, he'll probably move Ferreira to number 10, even though we haven't seen much of Ferreira there at all. And uh, put Brandon Vasquez in the sub. Um, what do you think? You think he changes his lineup or you think he kind of keeps it how it is? I mean, I think he has... Uh, well, it's a tough one, man. Um, I think the strongest feat of this of BJ Callahan's side throughout the entire tournament has been the midfield. So if he if he's gonna make a move, he has to make it up front or in the back. Um, I wouldn't necessarily move the Gianluca Busio, Sanz, and Mihalovic uh, fork in the middle. Um, I, I'll, I'll stick it with those, but definitely do something about Julian Gressel. <laughs> if you're gonna play Julian Gressel, don't play Jesus Ferreira. Uh, play someone like uh, Brandon Vasquez, who will take advantage of those crosses. It makes sense that you put someone like Julian Gressel if you're going to have a striker that takes advantage of that airstrike, right? That is a strong head, a strong header, uh, physically uh, gifted so he can handle uh, the opposition on the box and then win those aerial strikes. Uh, other than that, I um, I also support having El Caballo Cabo instead of Sendejas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of Panama real quick, um, they have had a pretty decent summer, you know, for their standards, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they narrowly lost that third place match to Mexico uh, in the Nations League. Yeah. Uh, Mexico winning 1-0 after a fourth minute goal by Jesus Gallardo. Um, but, you know, that match was pretty dominated by Panama. Panama dominating possession 57-43 against Mexico. They had more passes. They had more pass accuracy than Mexico. Yeah. And they had pretty much the same shots. Eight shots from Mexico's nine shots, three on target versus Mexico's four shots. So it was a pretty dominant display by uh, Panama against Mexico in that match. Again, that was when Mexico was playing at their lowest, playing for the Alcoca, who we know that they didn't enjoy playing for. Uh, that was the last match under the, the Alcoca era. But, um, you know, that team that narrowly lost that match against Mexico is their A team. It's the same team they brought to this Gold Cup. Mm-hmm. So while the USA may not have brought their A team, Canada may not have brought their A team, uh, Mexico's missing some A-team pieces. Um, this is, you know, Panama's all in with their A-team. And, uh, you know, they're, they're a technical side. We've seen them, in you know, in term, at least in terms of CONCACAF goes, a side that likes to keep possession. They had 62% possession against Costa Rica, 70% possession against Martinique, 60% against El Salvador, and 62% against um, Qatar. So they always have 60 or above possession, at least in this Gold Cup so far. So it's going to be interesting to see if the U.S. is able to keep possession or if they'll allow Panama to dominate possession and kind of just uh, absorb the attacks from Panama. Um, will be interesting to see, especially after the USA having, uh, you know, one less day of rest and having gone and played 120 minutes against Canada. Um, will they main, you know, will they maybe be a little yeah. bit more tired and uh, relent, uh, reluctant to control possession, just kind of, you know, ease it back to Panama. Um, what do you think about this Panama side, man? Uh, you like what you're seeing from them? So I, I definitely have to, I agree with you. I definitely have to agree with you. I This is a side that has been doing, you know, a great job at ensuring that they play as a unit. They are super organized when it comes to moving from, you know, the defensive to to an opposite to a um, to an opposite to a, sorry an offensive drive, and uh, and I definitely see them being a tough challenge for the for the USMNT. Um, unfortunately, they lost two of their key players uh, due to injury. One of them is Blackman, and the other one is uh, Michael Amir Murillo. I'm not going to pretend that I know any a lot about Panama soccer, but uh, they are definitely two players that they could not afford to lose. Nonetheless, if you look at the recent or the results of the Gold Cup, uh, it doesn't seem like they miss them that much. And I think that's a good uh, sign to show that 
they know how to play as a team. They understand each other's strengths and weaknesses, and they're able to cover for those uh, or to pick up the slack for those that are not present. So this is a very interesting uh, side to <clears throat> to play. Definitely. Um, you mentioned some of their depth, some of their, um, you know, picking up the slack between each other. Uh, some A couple of players I want to mention highlight that the USA has to be really careful for. Um, Ismael Diaz, the, the forward here that has four goals in the previous two matches. Um, he's very pacey. He's very strong. Um, how will the struggling center backs of, uh, you know, if, depending if he puts Miazga, depending if he puts um, Neil or if he puts uh, Miles Robinson, Miles Robinson and Miazga being kind of the scapegoats for last match, having the, the big errors on the two goals for Canada. How will they deal with him? Also, Godoy, the Nashville player, he's had a stellar tournament so far. Uh, will probably, you know, keep dictating that midfield. If the U.S. wants to hold uh, possession during this match, they're going to have to keep it away from him as he's been kind of their key distributor, key uh, engine in the midfield for Panama. Uh, it's going to be an interesting match, man. A, a match that you know ultimately is going to be one in the midfield. Like you said, the USA has the has had the consistency of that three midfield of Mihailovic, um, Sands, and Busio. Um, can they turn up and uh, you know dominate possession against these uh, Godoy and team? We'll see. Um, I guess as we wrap up here, I'm going to give I'm going to give my predictions, score predictions, and then I will ask you for your predictions. Um, I don't know, man. I think uh, it's going to be a tough one. I think we we both were talking and joking before the, the the recording here that we would have liked to see probably Jamaica versus the U.S. and Panama versus Mexico. That would have been a better uh, suited for Mexico, better suited for USA. Um, but ultimately, that's not how the cards uh, fell, and uh, USA is having to play Panama here. I still think USA will get it done. Um, I think they'll win. 2-1, maybe go to extra time, maybe 1-1 one, one, and then win 2-1 in extra time. Uh, but I think they have ultimately enough talent and or depth to just edge Panama there for the uh, final spot. Uh, what do you think in prediction-wise? Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a, a walk in the park from the US for the USMNT, uh, not especially I, I, after that match against Canada. Um, I really hope that they try not their best not to go into the 120 minutes again. So I, I'm going to say that the USMNT takes it home like 1-0. Uh, I see a very close match again. Uh, I don't see Panama let, you know, letting any space whatsoever. So, um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good one, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm psyched for both matches for sure. Yeah, it should be a good... Um soccer saturday well soccer mm -hmm. saturday soccer wednesday, wednesday. uh yeah because the finals on sunday mm -hmm. um yeah so as we wrap this up i want to shout out give a quick reminder again that um make sure you guys check out our giveaway video it's in our description uh make sure you uh, comment on that video and uh, be a subscriber in order for a chance to win and uh, that will run until the uh last day of the gold cup as soon as the gold cup ends we'll be recording our final reactions video and uh, we'll, that's where we'll uh, announce the winner of the giveaway. Um, Adrian, as we wrap this uh, video up, man, where can our listeners find us, dude? They can always find us on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notifications. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast on. Last but not least, you should also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Puro Pinche Gol. We post stuff every now and then. Yes, sir. So make sure to follow us on your preferred social media platform of choice. And uh, stick it here with Puro Pinche Gol as we uh, continue on with the uh, Gold Cup uh, semifinals and eventually the finals this weekend. Um, Adrian, another good episode with you, brother. I'll see you in the next one. Always a pleasure, dude. Take it easy. See you, man.